that there are two properties that are important in this standard, in this uh, context. Firstly, uh, we want D to be a standard digit set, which means that D contains a complete set of cosets of set D modulo A set D. And secondly, uh, we want D to be a primitive digit set. This means that, so, sloppily speaking, using D and A, we can go everywhere uh, in the lattice. What is easy to see is that uh, standard digit sets always lead to uh, positive Lebesgue measure. However, interestingly, the converse is not true, and it is a, a quite difficult problem to uh, characterize all possible digit sets for a given matrix. Even in the one-dimensional case, this is uh, non-trivial. For uh, one times one matrices with prime entries, so for primes, this was settled a long time ago. Also for prime powers, it is known. It is uh, more difficult if you take... Uh, numbers uh, composed of two primes. So this has been settled by uh, uh, Kassing Lau uh, from uh, Hong Kong and uh, Rao Hui from Wuhan. And as far as I know, they uh, just now work on this topic and uh, go uh, further and further towards characterizing digit sets, at least in the case of uh, one-dimensional matrices of uh, just vintages. So uh, I'm mainly interested in tilings. Uh, so, uh, what is not so hard to prove is if we find an integral self fn tile, then there exists some subset of the lattice set D such that uh, we get a tiling by F plus I. This is just by uh, blowing up uh, the tile according to the uh, self similarity equation and uh, subdivide. So, uh, Lagares and Wang proved that. Uh, you can use uh, set D in order to get at least a multiple tiling. So multiple tiling means that almost every point uh, of uh, RD is covered. Uh, D, uh, D is not good. Uh, P times where P is some fixed integer. What is more difficult is uh, to prove uh, that this multiple tiling is actually a tiling. This is not always true, but it is true for a big class. And there is a nice theorem of Lagarius and Wang from 1997 that says if A is an integer matrix which has an irreducible characteristic polynomial, and if D is a primitive standard digit set, then the tile F tiles RD with respect to the lattice set N. Uh, in fact, sorry? Ah, set D. I'm sorry, set D. Set D. Thank you. The result is actually a bit more general. Uh, if you uh, look at the uh, reducible characteristic polynomials also, you don't get always the tiling, but uh, they are able to give some characterizations in this case. Uh, the proof is based on a fully analytic tiling criterion, which goes back to Gröchenig and Haas, and uh, to uh, a result of Servaux, Kans, and one guy, so I don't know how to pronounce him because I don't know his nationality, uh, probably... Raugi or Roji. Uh, so those uh, three, they uh, found uh, uh, some results on uh, eigenfunctions of certain transfer operators. And uh, this is uh, needed in this context. I will come back to this a bit later. So uh, i give you some, some small example. Uh, if you take this matrix and this digit set, uh, you get the so-called team twin dragon, uh, which is quite well known. And uh, this... Uh, from the tiling with respect to safety, according to the result of Lagarius Wang. Of course, you can, uh, for a single giving tile, uh, decide algorithmically whether you get the tiling or not. Uh, so, uh, number systems also occurred in my title, so uh, just uh, briefly I want to mention that uh, tilings uh, induced by self fn tiles are related to generalized numeration systems. If you take a, sorry, if you take a monic polynomial, uh, and a set of digits, uh, n, containing the digits from 0 to the norm of this polynomial minus 1, and you take this factoring as a representation space, then uh, we, we uh, try to uh, express or to represent each element of this uh, quotient ring here uh, in this way. So x serves as the basis and uh, the coefficients here, p, n, uh, are the digits. So if uh, p is an irreducible polynomial, uh, this is isomorphic to some order. For instance, if you take uh, uh, 
b equal to uh, other side. This is a classical example I want to give you. If you take uh, p of x is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 2, then uh, q is isomorphic to uh, set i, and the representations you get are of this form hg uh, minus 1 plus i to the power of j. So this concept generalizes uh, the ordinary uh, QRE numeration to uh, orders of number fields. And if you want to permit also reduce your polynomials, it's more convenient to write this as residue class uh, So uh, as I mentioned, we can relate tiles to these uh, number systems. And uh, it often turns out that the geometric uh, topological properties, as Anne mentioned, of these tiles uh, reflect in arithmetic properties of the underlying number system. Here is uh, the example I just mentioned. This is the polynomial. This is the digit set. Uh, and the residue class ra ring, in this case, is isomorphic to set i. And the fundamental domain, in this case, is very well known. It's uh, the twin dragon of Don Knuth. In fact, uh, Don Knuth was the first to study such number systems. And uh, he also found out that each element of set i permits a finite representation uh, of this shape here. This is not true in general, but uh, for this case, we get a finite representation. So uh, in my talk, I want to get uh, one step farther. You see, uh, the, sorry, the polynomials here were monic polynomials. So in ordinary numeration, we use integers. So also integers are the solution of very easy monic polynomials. We want to go one step further and want to deal with non-monic polynomials. There is a paper uh, fairly recent by uh, Akiyama, Fungi, and Sakharovic, and they looked at number systems with uh, rational base, P over Q. So they want to represent numbers in this way. So the basis is a rational number, and here we have a digit set from 0 to P minus 1. Uh, this is important uh, because we want to meet each residue class. So we need so many digits in order to be able to represent all the integers in this way. This is not so hard to see. So uh, it turns out, this was observed by uh, these three uh, people in this paper, that the language of representations of the integers is very complicated. Uh, so it is not context-free. Uh, you can still say not so much about it. This makes uh, life much more complicated if you live here uh, uh, with uh, rational basis. Interestingly, they found out there is a relation to Mahler's uh, three-half problem. And using their notion of number systems, they could even prove uh, some uh, new results on a generalized version of Mahler's three-half problem. And uh, what I'm also uh, interested in, this concept, again, can be generalized to polynomials. So uh, we do the same as before, but now we look at polynomials uh, that are non-monic in general. Uh, again, the digit set uh, goes from 0 to the norm minus 1. We have this representation space. Uh, this is uh, a module which is no longer finitely generated. Uh, so uh, the representation space uh, becomes difficult. If you want to represent the analogs of integers, the language becomes difficult. So either your representation space becomes difficult or the language becomes difficult. These objects are much more difficult, actually, than uh, the number systems in the monic case. And now uh, the associated self affine tiles, they do not form even a multiple tiling. So i just give you some hint why this is the case. If you take uh, the base, uh, for instance, uh, 3, then uh, the associated tile would be the set j greater or equal 1, uh, di 3 to the power of minus i, ah, g, I should take, uh, where the digits are contained in 0, 1, 2. So uh, now if you look at uh, the uh, tile, or the first uh, trial for a tile associated with the 3 half number system, uh, you would do this. So you should write here 3 half to the power of minus j, such that dj is equal to 0. 1, 2, and uh, what you see uh, very quickly is that this will produce a lot of overlaps. So these objects are not so nice uh, if you take the full shift here. So there are two ways to uh, get rid of these overlaps and to get a tiling theory also in the rational case. The first way is to restrict the language uh, 
This will result into an aperiodic tiling with uh, quite difficult properties, and Wolfgang Steiner in his next talk will talk about this one. And the second possibility is, so what causes the problems here? The problems are caused by this uh, denominator 2 here. So how can we resolve the overlaps caused by one half? So uh, uh, and, uh, what we are pursuing in this talk is we uh, put this in a dyadic factor. So in fact, we look at it not for a tiling in R, but we look for a tiling in R times K2, where 2 is the dyadic completion uh, of uh, Q. And we just uh, embed the finite sums uh, diagon diagonally here, and uh, it turns out that this is the right space here to get the tiling. And I want to pursue this in a much more general context. In fact, uh, I want to uh, propose here a tiling theory for rational matrices. So instead of integral lattice tiles, I want to go for rational uh, lattice tiles. So uh, we choose just an arbitrary uh, expanding matrix, not completely arbitrary. Uh, in the first step, we decided to uh, uh, consider just a reducible case in order to uh, avoid uh, difficulties and uh, in order to make the theorems more uh, nice and without exceptions. The first problem is, uh, so what are the, the good digits in this case? So uh, I told you before, the digits are elements of the lattice set D in the integral case. So what is the good uh, digit set here? Uh, I will show you, probably there are better ways to introduce the good digit sets. Uh, for the moment, uh, this is the best way I know. So uh, let beta be uh, a root of the characteristic polynomial of A. Uh, and now uh, we choose, so, um, Q beta can be regarded as a vector space over Q, finite dimensional vector space, and we choose the basis of this vector space uh, in a way that the multiplication by beta is done by the matrix A. And now the digit set, the, the, the good digit sets turn out to be uh, the subsets of set beta, or the pre-image of set beta uh, in this vector space. Uh, and uh, in order to get the tiling theory, uh, we uh, need to uh, confine ourselves to good digit sets, the good candidates. And again, we define some notion of primitivity here. This is just analog. The digit set is quite primitive. If we can, using digits and the, uh, the matrix, which is the multiplication by beta, in order to go everywhere in set beta. So uh, this is a primitive digit set. And the digit set is called the standard digit set in D uh, if D is a complete set of residues uh, modulo beta, set beta. <clears throat> so now uh, I told you in order to get tilings, we need to do something, some augmentation by periodic spaces. How does this look like in a general case? So how to define rational self affine tiles? We take our rational matrix. And uh, we choose uh, a digit set in set beta. So now uh, the periodic factors, they are directed by the matrix. And so they can be read off from the root of the characteristic polynomial. So uh, this root of the uh, beta, uh, we, we uh, create a fractional ideal generated by beta. And uh, we write this in the form a over B, where A over B are, uh, A and B are integral ideals that are relatively prime. And it turns out that the reasonable representation space is the space K beta now. So this is an open uh, sub ring of the ideal ring uh, uh, of uh, Q beta. And uh, it uh, consists of finitely many factors. Uh, first, we have the infinite primes. This uh, conjugate to the completions uh, according to the there are conjugates of beta, like in the unit case, but now we have also finite primes here. We have uh, completions here uh, for all primes dividing B. And now uh, we define the rational self affine tile, F, F beta, or F AD. Uh, this is defined in this way. So we can multiply by beta or by A because we choose the vector space in a way that A is. Uh, Multiplication by A is done by multiplication by beta. And uh, so uh, we define tile F beta 
or uh, just F as the uh, unique compact non-empty solution of this iterated function system. And now we wish to prove tiling properties uh, in the spirit of Lagarde and one in this setting. So, uh, firstly, uh, we need uh, some analog of the Lebesgue measure. This is standard. Uh, so we take the Haar measure mu on k beta. Uh, this is the product of the Haar measures on the factors for the infinite primes, so for the conjug for the Galois conjugates, we just take the Lebesgue measure on Kp, here Kp is equal to R or C, and for the finite primes P, uh, we say that uh, mu P is the measure, uh, the Haar measure that satisfies this equality here, so uh, for the nth power of the prime P plus something, uh, the measure is uh, the uh, absolute norm of P to the power of minus n. So, uh, how to embed q beta in k beta? We do it in the standard way. Uh, we embed it diagonally. So, uh, if we have an element c from uh, q beta, then we just, oh, this is wrong. This should be xi, 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 xi. So, we write xi in each uh, coordinate. And uh, so uh, this is a diag diagonal uh, embedding, and uh, as number series know, uh, despite it is diagonal, it is dense. Uh, so Q beta is uh, dense in this, uh, relatively dense in this uh, space, K beta. Uh, moreover, Q beta acts multiplicatively on the ring Q beta in an obvious way. So if we multiply an element set of K beta, by an element psi of the ring q beta, uh, this just means that we multiply in each coordinate by this element of psi. So once again, let me mention, uh, we could, of course, define uh, a self-affine tile uh, of Rd associated to this number system, but uh, if you look at this object, it is not so nice and it has uh, no tiling property. So this is the wrong way. You have to go one of these two ways, either you uh, uh, forget about self-similarity, you get more complicated uh, objects, but you are in RD, or you go to a different space containing the periodic factors in order to rescue the self-similarity. So now uh, let me give some basic properties of uh, these tiles. So it turns out that the analog of the tiling set, set D, is set beta. And set beta is embedded to the open subring of the ideal ring k beta. So uh, I recall that the, I don't recall, I write for the first time, I think, that uh, the characteristic polynomial of uh, A uh, is written in this way. So now uh, we want some uh, uh, fundamental properties. The first property, this looks rather innocent, so the uh, measure, the, the Haar measure on k beta, of beta times some set m, this can be written in this way, this is equal to a0 times u b of m. So this looks very easy, and uh, so firstly we, we just didn't look at this because we thought that this is uh, clear, but uh, uh, when we looked at it, uh, so we were a bit astonished because it was absolutely not clear, and uh, finally it turns out that uh, you need some quite tricky application of the dedekind mertens lemma on the content of polynomials in order to uh, get this result. So at least we did not see any easier way uh, to get this. So this was the first time when we saw that, uh, so here we are uh, on a somewhat more uh, tricky uh, terrain than uh, in the Monik case. Sorry? A0 is positive. A0 is positive, yes. So uh, furthermore, we get that the closure of Q beta uh, mapped into the ideal ring is, ah, it's, of course it's things, yes, so uh, the, the closure of this embedding of Q beta is equal to the full ring. Uh, then we get that uh, I beta 
is a Deloney set in K-beta. Uh, what we need here very often is the so-called strong approximation theorem, which is uh, well known in algebraic number theory. And what is also uh, fairly easy, and uh, this can be done in a similar way as in the Monic case, uh, one gets quite easily that uh, F beta plus this phi of set beta forms a multiple tiling of K beta. So the main problem uh, is uh, to show that this multiple tiling is actually a tiling. And I want to uh, go into this a little bit more. Uh, so uh, another thing that can be shown is that F beta is the closure of its interior, like in the Monic case, and that the boundary of this set has measured zero. Sorry? In K beta. In K beta. So in, in uh, so uh, it is, uh, what is your problem that the, that the space is totally disconnected, the periodic space? But it doesn't matter. So we, we have an interior in spite of that. But this interior is disconnected. But the, still, it goes through that we have the closure of its interior. It's just in the uh, topology defined by the valuations uh, on each of the factors, okay? So now, uh, uh, in order to uh, prove the tiling property, we uh, need to check the overlaps of the central tile with other tiles. And uh, so like uh, Gröchenig and Haas, we do this uh, by uh, looking at the so-called contact matrix. In fact, it turns out, also in our setting here, that uh, the boundary of the self affine tile uh, has a so-called graph-directed self affine structure. So it is not self affine anymore, but it is something uh, slightly weaker. It is graph-directed self affine. This means that uh, it consists of uh, finitely many pieces, and each of these pieces are made up of smaller copies of the subpieces. Like this is true uh, for the Rossi fractal, for instance. Uh, just a moment. Uh, the, uh, so um, this set TN is defined recursively. So I start with some uh, fundamental domain of uh, the, this uh, phi beta of set beta. And first, uh, I uh, make up the set T0. This consists of all elements of uh, set beta that have, uh, so, so that the shifted fundamental domain has a non-empty intersection with this fundamental domain. And then I iterate. So uh, given T0, I make up T, T1, and so on and so on. And what I get is Tn is the, uh, the set of neighbors of the nth approximation of my tile. Okay, so uh, I approximate the tile step by step. This is uh, hidden in uh, this uh, condition here. And Tn gives me the, in the neighbors of the nth approximation of the tile. For instance, if I do this in this setting here, so the first approximation, the fundamental domain of uh, set D in Rd or set 2 in R2 would be just a square. And then I apply the self-similarity equation to the square. So first, the, the set T0, this would be just plus minus a i and plus minus 1. So for the set T1, I apply the set equation and I get two squares. And then uh, the neighbors here look like this, for instance. In the third step, I have uh, this figure. And T2 gives me the neighbors of uh, figures in, of this shape in the lattice, and they go on and go on, and uh, this guy here will uh, eventually approximate the uh, twin dragon. In fact, uh, so what I do is uh, I look at the union of all this TN. Firstly, one can easily show that, uh, that this union eventually stabilizes. This is uh, due to the compactness of the tile. Uh, secondly, so this set T, this union, so this is not the set of all neighbors of the fractal. In case of the twin dragon it is, but in general it is not. But it is the uh, set of sufficiently many neighbors uh, of the uh, fractal 
so that they cover the whole boundary. And this is all what we need. Uh, so uh, this is very much related to Shigeki Akiyama's talk. Uh, so uh, he considered something similar than this. He considered the, uh, the, all the neighbors in his, uh, in his talk. So he considered the so-called boundary matrix in this context, which is bigger than the contact matrix, but this is not needed here. So we are uh, good with uh, this smaller one. Oh, I'm sorry. N is equal to D. This is the digits. I'm, I think this will uh, occur l later on also. So I'm, I'm terribly sorry. So the digit set is N and also D. So now uh, I built up a matrix using this uh, neighboring set T. T times T matrix, so number of elements of T times number of elements of T matrix. This matrix shall be C. And the entries of this matrix are defined in this way. So roughly speaking, they say uh, uh, this is the number of elements that a small copy of the boundary of T with C plus K is contained in T plus L. So this somehow codes the uh, graph-directed iterated function system that gives rise to the boundary. Okay? And what we want is, so not the boundary, in fact, uh, in general these are the overlaps, but if it is a tiling, this is the boundary, I must say it in this way. This uh, characterizes the overlaps in the multiple tiling, and if we have a tiling, it characterizes the boundary. So in other words, if uh, this characterizes the overlaps, if this set of overlaps is small, then uh, this should be a tiling. So we want to... Uh, to make this contact matrix small in some sense, uh, in fact I can say it, we, we want to make the, the, uh, uh, the large tag value, the spectral radius, small, smaller than the norm of the polynomial, and this will turn out to be a, a criterion for tiling. Okay, so it's all written here. So uh, again, we take the uh, characteristic polynomial. And this is also related to Shigeki Akiyama's talk. I think you presented a criterion of the same flavor. So, uh, let uh, rho of c be the spectral radius of the contact matrix. If the spectral radius is less than the norm of the tile, the law of the minimal polynomial, then uh, c beta, this means f plus i, or f beta plus i beta. So this forms uh, a tiling, if and only if, even, but we don't need the other direction. Uh, this one's telling provided that uh, the spectral radius is smaller than a node. Uh, no, I, I assume it to be positive. A0 is positive. A0 is always positive. Then I just multiply by minus one. It doesn't matter because I'm non monic. Yes. Hmm? Oh, I forgot this is an important point. Uh, this, uh, the characteristic polynomial must be primitive. The, uh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. So <laughs> this is another mistake I made. The characteristic polynomial must be primitive because otherwise, so you can uh, make uh, A0 as large as you want. Characteristic polynomial must be primitive. Sorry? Uh, it is automatically primitive because the leading coefficient is 1. Uh, we have the analog theorem in the unit case. So you, you compare the, the rho with the um, determinant of the matrix, which is the, uh, the norm of the polynomial. Okay? So uh, one can... Uh, use this uh, criterion to check algorithmically whether a given pair yields a tiling or not. But, uh, so we want to give a uh, general result, general tiling result. So, uh, and uh, we want to use uh, Fourier methods uh, on uh, ideal rings. So uh, we need uh, special characters. And uh, so if you don't like this formula, these characters, they are just needed 
So what they can do, how to uh, explain it in the best way. So if you look at this character, so this filters out all the elements of set that are divisible by uh, Q. And what we need here, we are in set beta, and we want to find character sums that can be used in order, used in order to filter out elements of the form beta, set beta. And, sorry? Oh, I don't see. Oh, I did. <laughs> yes. E of x is equal to e to pi x. So this is an exponential sum here. So we uh, use exponential sums uh, on the ring k beta. This is locally compact. And so we can uh, use uh, Fourier analysis there. So using these characters, uh, we see that uh, each function he beta of k set, where k is an arbitrary element of k beta, is a character of k beta. And, uh, so what we do now is we set up the Fourier setting on this locally compact group. Uh, we take the uh, subspace of k beta uh, that is annihilated by all these characters. And uh, so finally we do uh, Fourier analysis on a compact space. It's dual, it's discrete. So we define a Fourier transform, and as the dual is discrete, what we get uh, as an inverse transform is just a sum. Okay? And uh, so what we want to do now is uh, we want to uh, study the Fourier transformation of the contact matrix. So the uh, contact matrix is an operator on k beta, and we, we want to study its, its Fourier transform. And uh, by investigating the eigenfunctions of this Fourier transform, uh, we will show that uh, the uh, irreducibility property finally leads to a contradiction. Uh, so uh, what do we do? So we form this set of function omega hat. This is, uh, these are character sums. And uh, so uh, the coefficient dk, where k goes over the entries of the contact matrix. So sloppily spoken, each neighbor of the central tail corresponds to another uh, frequency. And, uh, okay, so uh, it is clear that the Fourier transform and inverse Fourier transform of these functions is defined in this way. And uh, we define the Fourier transform, C hat, of the contact matrix. This is an operator on this function space. And this is defined, obviously, in this way. Uh, so now uh, there comes a very important step. Uh, we want to get a reasonable representation of this operator as a transfer operator. And indeed, uh, what we can do, okay, is this just a moment, is this, ah, this is later. So firstly, uh, uh, before we uh, transform this, uh, we, uh, uh, are able to prove a Fourier analytic criterion. It's just the, the Fourier transform of the criterion on the uh, large diagonal value I, I showed you before. So it says that this correction, F beta plus E I beta, called C beta here, uh, if this does not form a tiling, then the, so there is something about the eigenfunctions of this uh, Fourier analytic trans uh, Fourier transformation of C. Indeed, there exists a non-constant real-valued eigenfunction uh, of uh, C hat to the eigenvalue A naught. And uh, so what we want to do, we want to show that for our class uh, this cannot happen because of the irreducibility of the matrix. So uh, again, A naught is the uh, norm of the matrix or the, the, the determinant of the matrix or the norm of the polynomial. So uh, I told you we need a reasonable representation of the Fourier transform of the contact matrix. Uh, in order to get this, we have to do some exponential sum uh, calculations uh, in k beta. So here, uh, the different 
ideal place of all, but I don't want to go into details. Uh, this is very important here. Oh. So what's, what's that? is equal to some finite sum of uh, a function that is uh, the, the autocorrelation of the digits, if you want to uh, put it like that, uh, times the same function, but now we apply beta to the minus 1, or if you want to go to the vector space a minus 1, z plus d star. And it is this representation of the transfer operator uh, that will allow us to uh, say something about the set of zeros of an eigenfunction. So, uh, indeed, uh, the, the, the set of zeros of an eigenfunction will have, uh, have to be uh, A invariant in some sense. So it's not that easy, but uh, let's, let's put it easy. So uh, the set of zero functions, the set of zeros of this eigenfunction has to be A invariant. And uh, it has to be irrational. So it has to be an, an irrational A invariant subspace, and A is irreducible, and so you can show that this subspace has to be the full space. Uh, and uh, this means that the zero set is everywhere, uh, so uh, this is a contradiction to the assumption that the eigenfunction is not constant. This is what we are going to do. i just give you uh, a few comments on that. Uh, so we, we use this representation here. Uh, uh, there are several problems uh, we uh, had to settle here. Uh, somehow we, we, we need to, to get rid of the periodic factors here because we want to apply a theorem uh, I mentioned before, a theorem of Servo uh, constant uh, Raugi, and uh, we did not succeed to uh, find a reasonable way of generalizing this uh, to our periodic setting. Uh, so uh, we, we had to... Uh, go for the non-periodic uh, version of this uh, theorem, and this uh, made us uh, several problems. And, uh, in fact, uh, our original functions had to be replaced by some other functions in order to uh, be able to apply this theorem. And so here is what uh, one has to do. So the mentioned result of these three guys implies that the set of zeros of the eigenfunction function f so F infinity, in fact, we got rid of the periodic factors here. Uh, in some way, I cannot explain uh, more closely. That this set is beta invariant, and it contains translates of a certain subspace of Rd. Then, uh, by some other arguments, we can exclude that uh, this subspace is zero-dimensional, because zero-dimensional a priori would be possible if the, if the matrix is irreducible. So this means we get an A invariant subspace with this dimension, Irreducible, uh, 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 irrational A invariant subspace with this dimension, and this contradicts the fact that A uh, has uh, irreducible minimal polynomial. So, in other words, uh, non constant eigenfunctions cannot exist if uh, A has an irreducible uh, minimal polynomial. Uh, so, uh, this proves uh, the following theorem. So, if we have a, a matrix of rationals that is expanding, and has uh, irreducible characteristic polynomial. Uh, if D is a primitive standard digit set, then uh, the tile FAD tiles K beta uh, by translates contained in the set phi set beta. So this is the analog of uh, the lagarde wang result for rational matrices. And now uh, I think I should show you at least one picture. So of course you cannot uh, represent the periodic factors, but you, in fact you can represent them just by uh, replacing p to the power of k by p to the power of minus k. Uh, in the case of a 3 half, you get uh, this kind of tiling. It looks aperiodic, but this is just due to the representation uh, of the tiles. Uh, indeed, this is a periodic tiling. And uh, so uh, if you look at the bottom lines of this tiling, uh, you get the tiling of R1. And this is the tiling that corresponds to the language 
we switch. Uh, it is a so-called shift radix system tiling, and uh, this uh, real tiling associated to rational matrices will be the main subject of the talk of Wolfgang Steiner. And uh, this picture ends my talk. So uh, thank you very much uh, for listening.